Okay, after about a year, close to it, I looked out at one side of the window and I finally saw, okay, hey, we got a clear sky. This would be the first day, full day, of a clear sky. And I'm talking about, you know, maybe cumulus clouds portending the uh, next few days of nice weather. And then I said, okay, I'm going to look out the other window and see what's going on because this is, you know, unprecedented for the past year anyway. And I'm sure enough, Bingo! We see stratus clouds way up there, you know, and then we see all this other kind of nonsense. So this is just in keeping with what's been happening, and we've yet to get a nice, really clear day, as I said, you know, at least with a, a clear dome above and maybe cumulus clouds here and there, pretending in the next few days be nice weather. Etc. Etc. But no, this is this is really what's been going on, and uh, this is really indicative of climate change. And so, therefore, you know, I lived in the woods for about seven years, and so I was always exposed to the elements. And uh, you know, I became extremely sensitive to the weather, especially the wind, because that was the number one enemy when you're living out in the in the uh, uh, exposed to the elements and having to depend on weather for your comfort, especially outdoors when you just basically have a fire uh, to keep you warm if it's uh, going to be cold weather. I'm talking about up in Canada, the North Woods. And so this is the situation here ha now in Philippines, Cebu, in this, more or less in the center of the island chain. And uh, so this is what's going on. And then I, I just recently looked into the uh, situation. I've been investigating for the past two or three weeks, um, maybe four or five times that I had a chance to get on the internet because uh, we don't get internet where I am up in the mountain as, as yet anyway we're trying. But that's another whole story. The thing is, finally I came upon a link regarding the uh, the jet stream and how it's been altered as a result of the North Atlantic conveyor and that situation has been itself predicted to be uh, breaking down as of let's say 1995 and sure enough when uh, 2010 came around it was fully shut down somewhere in April as a result of the oil uh, catastrophe out in the Gulf and uh, so the loop goes around it goes around the entire planet and at that point it uh, loops up from the Caribbean and goes into the Gulf makes a quick loop around and then continues up north along the uh, eastern seaboard of the US and then eventually out into or toward Greenland and then making a curve down and that's what gave the the uh, north uh, the western portion of the of Europe some nice weather especially England Scotland the UK area so now uh, as a result of this absolute shutdown of this conveyor and therefore the jet stream uh, swooping down from the Arctic they're going to get weather equivalent to Moscow because they are basically the same distance to the pole from where Moscow is. I'm speaking about London specifically. So uh, that's just part of it. And well, there is a consideration where the uh, the pipes, the water pipes throughout London are buried about two feet underground, uh, whereas in Moscow they are about six to eight feet to ward off the freezing temperatures and preventing the, uh, the, the, the water feed from freezing over. So this situation in London is going to be uh, quite uh, literally catastrophic. Uh, no water for, what, 15, 18 million people. Then you have a situation globally as a result of this uh, conveyor basically altering its, its uh, uh, fundamental uh, pattern and so therefore you have uh, a, a complete reversal of all of the trends around the planet 
And this is why, as a matter of fact, it's even affecting the Philippines. And we've been recently, since 2010, April, uh, been experiencing uh, all kinds of strange weather patterns, especially in uh, China, for example, where they had extraordinary droughts. And uh, we had, as a matter of fact, prior to about a year ago, about a four and a half month drought. And uh, that was basically uh, in recent, let's say, at least 50 years, as far as the elders in the area are concerned, the, they haven't experienced anything like that. Not one drop of rain for over four months. And so uh, there you go. And this is what's happening. So. This is all scientifically based fact, it's not conspiracy theory, These, this is hard science and it's just a matter of time before the situation really hits the fan and we're going to wind up basically with a food shortage around the planet and if you recall uh, Michelle Obama came on TV urging people to grow their own crops etc and this is why she said what she said and I, I didn't really put two and two together when that happened I had no idea and I don't think she or anybody else in the government is telling anybody about this because they don't want to cause a panic but there's going to be a major critical food shortage very very shortly and so this is the situation that along with the collapse of the US dollar and I've been urging people since 1987, believe it or not, to start investing in gold and silver, especially silver because that's what's used in industry. And just before the collapse of the dollar, which is going to be concurrent with the collapse of the uh, currencies in Europe and so forth, uh, it's basically going to... Uh, uh, the, the gold and silver, especially silver prices, are going to skyrocket just before that happens. So what we originally, I originally invested many years ago in silver at $4.75 an ounce, now is upwards of $40 an ounce, and gold at that time was about uh, edging around $3.50 an ounce, and now it's $1,600 something an ounce. So this is going to show you how uh, the dollar is completely uh, decimating since 1913, for example, with the Federal Reserve uh, enacted by Congress, uh, Woodrow Wilson signed it in, and he said right after he, he did so that he basically sold out the U.S. to the uh, international bankers. And so, therefore, the U.S. dollar since that time has lost 95% of its pur purchasing power. So this is another thing to consider. So the inevi it's an inevitability where the dollar is going to collapse. And when it does, basically they're going to exchange what you have in U.S. currency, maybe for, you know, a 20 to 1 ratio. You have $10,000 and they might give you 500 or something like this. So uh, there you go. That's the situation. And that's why if you have silver or gold, you're going to get top dollar for what that is in the, in the new currency exchange. So keep that in mind. Keep all these things in mind. And I would make uh, mention that your best bet is to grow crops uh, underground. This way you're not, uh, you know, prone to having extraordinary heavy, heavy rains followed by droughts. Your better bet is that, you know, the crops underground are more stable. They don't need to be supported by, you know, uh, strong stalks and roots, etc. They, they will thrive. And so this is what you want to feed off of. The other, the other thing as far as vegetation is concerned is sprouts. Learn to sp sprout your own. And you could, there's so many nutrients in sprouts that you can virtually live off those uh, unto themselves. So these are two hints that you might want to follow up on. Uh, hate to sound like a prophet of doom here, but this is, this is reality. This is not, uh, you know, air-headed, uh, wishful ideologies or, you know, the, the coming of some sort of uh, a uh, kickback in karma for humanity. This is just the way it's going. And uh, throughout history, these things have been happening cyclically over time, usually uh, over many, many thousands of years. 
As a matter of fact, this situation with the uh, the change in the jet stream coming swooping down from the Arctic, which is it's deviating from what they call the circumpolar vortex, and so what this situation is uh, portending is a, a little ice age, a mini ice age coming. And this only takes about two or three years to uh, uh, establish itself, whereas a major ice age can take upwards 10 to 15 years. But a mini ice age is relatively quick, and once it starts, it really goes, and so we're on the precipice of that change. So this 2012 uh, scenario is adding up in different ways, and uh, you can take that to the bank because this is happening right now, on, on these two levels at least. Okay, take care.